I guess I will start then by saying that this is a Vicki presentation. Uh, we have asked Senator Leahy's chief senior policy advisor, uh, who is an expert, I believe, in foreign affairs, to speak on what is the situation in Haiti and in Colombia. We have with us Tim Reister from Senator Leahy's office. And we also have another expert on Haiti, who is Robin Lloyd, who will be talking a little bit with uh, Tim Reeser about the situation in Haiti and also in Colombia. Robin is the uh, creator of a little film, not little, maybe little, 20 minutes, but very important film called, uh, well, it's about the Haitian revolution, which occurred in 1804 when the Haitian people rose up and took control of their destiny, expelled the French, that was when the French held that island and held all the people on, many of the people on the island in slavery and led by Toussaint Louverture, that government was overthrown and Haiti became the first black republic in the Americas and probably in the world. Robin did a little film on that many years ago, a beautiful little film that was an animated film that, we, that I, we would hope that Senator Leahy would someday take a look at. So we're turning this over to Robin. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for your uh, introduction, Sandy. And um, so, Tim, this is really exciting to have you here and to talk with you. And um, uh, I remember at, when the... Um, when the government was changing and we had a brief exchange and I said, finally, um, Senator Leahy will be able to become head of the appropriations committee and, and, and his party will have more power. And um, so that is now happening. And yet things are so difficult, it seems, and so jammed up. So I guess my main question is, is what do you see as the as, as the Biden policy in Latin America, um, the two countries we're talking about today are both suffering from uh, very strong protests in the streets every, 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 every night, every weekend, Colombia and Haiti, and they both have leaders that the, the people don't want. Meanwhile, in Peru, the people are probably, um, electing a socialist president, possibly. So I just wondered what, if you wanted to give us an overview before we start talking about the two countries in particular. Well, thank you very much. I, I would like to see this film on Haiti. If I don't know how you could get it to me, but- I will send um, you the link. I will do that. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Um, because Haiti is a country that, despite all of the misery and problems that exist there, uh, if you've been there, you really become very attached to it and to the people of Haiti. I certainly have, having been there a number of times and uh, having very good friends in Haiti. So I, um, I would like to see it. Um, you know, I think it's, it's still unfortunately early to say what this administration's policy is for Latin America. They don't have yet an assistant secretary of state for the Western Hemisphere. They have nominated someone, but he hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, the only uh, significant statements that we have heard so far are that corruption is going to be a major focus of this administration, which I think is good, but uh, we need to have a much clearer idea of what that actually means. Uh, they have, even before President Biden was inaugurated, pledged to increase U.S. assistance to Central America uh, by about double, um, which uh, to me was not a very smart thing to do, um, or at least to say, uh, and I can expand on that. Uh, and then the vice president went to Mexico and Guatemala for a couple of days mm -hmm. uh, and announced various yeah. uh, programs or um, uh, uh, funding that uh, they intend to provide for various purposes uh, and, and also 
um, I think not very wisely, uh, uh, you know, use that opportunity to tell people not to um, become refugees or migrants. Uh, not that we want people to, um, we don't, but uh, we also recognize that uh, for most of these people, they don't have many options and that they make that decision out of desperation. So to tell them not to, uh, when they have the right to and may feel uh, that they have no alternative strikes me as kind of simplistic. Uh, but in any event, um, you know, to summarize, I don't think this administration really has a clear idea of um, what its policy in either Central America or towards Colombia or even Haiti is yet. And, you know, that is something that we are pressing them on because at the same time, as I said, they're asking for a lot more money. And one thing we've learned is that the amount of money that you spend uh, in countries like this is not a measure of anything. Uh, and we have spent quite a bit. And I think the results speak for themselves. And so we need to learn some things from um, our own mistakes and from the mistakes of uh, governments in these countries and not repeat them. Uh, but we do also need to recognize that um, you know, what happens in these countries affects us and, and that we have uh, an interest in trying to address them. But um, we also know that what happens in this country affects them. Uh, and um, unless we deal with those parts of the, of the uh, dynamic, um, uh, we're not going to, I think, make a whole lot of progress. So we're hoping this is, that this administration, uh, which has some very good people in it, uh, Senator Leahy chaired a hearing yesterday with the Secretary of State, uh, who's a you know exceptionally qualified person uh, for the job. Uh, and the issue of Central America came up. And um, you know, unlike the previous administration, we have serious, capable, thoughtful people who we can talk to. But the problems in these countries are extremely complicated, longstanding, deeply rooted, that are of a type that we haven't even figured out how to solve in our own country. So people should understand that these are not problems that get fixed quickly. And the, the necessary elements of a solution currently, in my view, don't exist, uh, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, if I could uh, keep going on that, in a way, it seems to me that the situation in Venezuela cre is creating, or the uh, American attitude towards Venezuela is poisoning the countries. For example, the reason why um, the president of Haiti has been uh, supported by the United States is because uh, he went along with the US um, decision to uh, replace uh, the, the president of Venezuela and, and the, the policies of the United States towards Venezuela. So by doing that, the president of Haiti uh, sort of was is confirmed now by um, by the United States, and for a l that little island, that means he's there. He's he's there in a powerful <laughs> position, and yet that was when the the protest really started in in Haiti was because the people supported Venezuela. They didn't want their president to be against Venezuela because Venezuela had been giving them oil for, for years at a cheap price. Um, and uh, what do you think of the, of the policy of Biden's policy towards Venezuela? Can, could that, could he, could it loosen up? I mean, this guy Guido, he is not a real potential president. Do you think, or what do you think about that? No, I, I don't. I don't think he is. I, I think that you know they inherited a policy that had, that by all I think objective measures has failed, 
in, Gwen in Venezuela. Um, you know, on the other hand, you know, it's hard to know what our policy should be towards Venezuela, which is, you know, run by a government that, you know, has really no legitimacy at this point. And, and I think that, um, you know, this, we now have, we're now dealing with a, a, a huge humanitarian uh, crisis uh, that is impacting Colombia and Peru and Ecuador. Um, and, and I think that our most immediate focus ought to be trying to uh, take care of people who have uh, felt compelled to leave Venezuela and are living under extremely difficult circumstances, um, often caught between different gangs um, uh, along the border of Colombia and Venezuela. Uh, Colombia now has at least a million and a half Venezuelans. I, I think that you know, this administration really needs to think hard about um, how to play a constructive role in finding a solution to the problem of Venezuela. And I think that um, it's going to be, or it needs to be quite a different approach than what the Trump administration pursued. That is that it's going to have to involve the participation of other countries, uh, certainly the Colombians, um, most likely the Cubans, um, the Venezuelans, and uh, um, you know, and I, I don't think that it's going to um, result in uh, Guaido becoming the president of Venezuela. Uh, but you know, how to how to find a way out of the situation that Venezuela is currently in. Uh, given the nature of that government, um, I think is um, could occupy uh, you know anyone for probably 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the next five years. But I I think that in Haiti, you know, the problem is not just about Venezuela. Um, people not a very good speaker. You know the. He's on a lazy staff, right? Yeah, well, I, I've even met him in his office there, but. Hang on. Oh, lo, lo siento, lo siento. Okay, uh, wait, wait a minute. Could you, yes, all right, thank you. So I think in, in the case of Haiti, the, you know, the U.S., in, in our view, the <laughs> Trump administration um, continued what has been the, 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 the practice of previous administrations supporting governments which uh, were elected with a small percentage of, of votes um, in an election which I don't think anyone could regard as being credible um, and supported that person because they really didn't see any other option. And um, you know, now it seems to me anyway, President Moise has 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 really no legitimacy. He has very little support. Um, he's been promoting this constitutional referendum, which the U.S. doesn't even support. Um, there's talk about elections, and yet the conditions don't remotely lend themselves to free and fair elections. And so, to me anyway, the only possible way out of this situation. Uh, and it's been tried many times before without a whole lot of success, is some kind of transitional um, authority um, comprised of um, Haitians from different sectors of society um, that can then um, come up with a plan for um, elections for a new government. But I don't think those conditions exist today. And I think the United States needs to um, wash its hands of uh, the current Haitian government, uh, because I don't think it has any credibility or any legitimacy, um, and make clear that, you know, we are, um, our interests are in, are on, are, are in what's best for the Haitian people. But I think it's the, the dissatisfaction and the, the, the protests and all of that um, have a lot more than, is about a lot more than Venezuela uh, in Haiti. 
Yeah, well, we, you would think the government would be anxious to um, provide conditions so that people wouldn't want to be coming across the border in Mexico and, uh, and however the Haitians get here. And that would mean supporting a government that the people can accept. Now, he, he thinks he has another year from, I think, February, he thinks he uh, his term is not over until next February. So Correct. it's going to be they're just going to have to sit there and and be pissed off for <laughs> another. Well, I don't know. I mean, the opposition in Haiti is very divided. And I mean, it's not like there's some obvious alternative. Uh, there is no other government. There's no other clear leader to point to uh, the you know, the Haitian parliament is not functioning. Um, Moise, if you ask me, is, you know, a total failure. Um, but it's a chaotic situation with daily protests, blockades, gang shootings, uh, in which the police are also involved. I mean, it's, it's hard to sort of point one's finger at a solution in Haiti, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I, I wish that weren't the case. Uh, because there's no place that uh, that needs it more than Haiti, if you ask me. But I, um, you know, Senator Leahy has spoken about this multiple times. Uh, in his view, um, uh, Moise should uh, resign. Uh, but the opposition is is it's not like there is, you know, a clear alternative of any type or any kind of consensus within the opposition. Uh, and so it's a little bit in that sense, like Venezuela, where the opposition is very divided and Maduro has taken, has exploited that. Um, and, um, and so, you know, ultimately my own view is that it's the people of these countries that is, that are going to dis determine the future of these countries. Uh, the United States has a long history in, in Central America and Haiti and you know, it's been a very mixed history and much of it has been quite negative. And, and so while I think there are things that we can do, I mean, we're feeding tens of thousands of people in Guatemala right now. Right. There, there's all kinds of things that we're doing uh, in public health in Haiti. There, there would not be a public health system in Haiti if it weren't for the United States right now. Um, there are many examples like that. Um, but on the other hand, you know, our history in these countries is one in which um, you know, I generally think um, we should not feel that it's our job uh, to solve their problems um, uh, because too often um, we end up aligning ourselves with governments that, that don't deserve our support and making excuses for them, uh, even though they are um, corrupt and abusive and, and in fact part of the problem. Uh, so you know, I think if we're going to continue to provide aid to these countries, et cetera, we, we need to be very careful about who we support and in what way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem is we, uh, we've caused the problems by basically overthrowing the one person that they elected twice, once at the beginning with 67% of the vote, namely Jean-Bertrand Barris Aristide, and he's He's in the country now running a, uh, a college of uh, medicine. So, but apparently he is absolutely not a possibility for being brought back into government. Does anyone else have a question here yeah. uh, for, for Haiti? And then we'll move on to Colombia because we do have a, um, a, a citizen from Colombia who I think wants to say something later. I, could, I say, could I ask a question about Haiti? Yeah, yeah. Okay, when when uh, Aristide was in power, what, the United States, as I understand it, opposed Aristide, correct? Right? Yes. Is that correct? Ar Aristide was in power twice. Yeah, and what, why did the United States oppose him? They opposed him at one point and they helped him return at another point. Um, I think what's most relevant today is that Aristide does not seem to be interested in playing a meaning, a significant role in the government. Um, and the question is, who does? Mm. Um, 
But, you know, what was the policy under the Clinton administration or the Bush administration at this point is not really very relevant to me. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and Aristide, you know, was um, the hope of many people. Right. Uh, but he also wasn't um, uh, everything that we would have wished. Uh, but in any event, um, it does not appear that he is a viable um, uh, you know, future leader for Haiti. So the question is, who is? Mm -hmm. Okay, Robin, that was my question. Maybe, and did you want to turn to? Well, does anyone else? I think, uh, yeah, Musa. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Tim. This is uh, Chris and Musa Ishaq. I can see that. Wow. <laughs> hi. It's great How to see you? you. Thank you. Same, Same here. here. Uh, you know, you I have a question. My hair has gotten a lot grayer. Uh, we we all have uh, grown uh, a bit older and uh, more dignified, I guess. <laughs> well, I can certainly say older. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask, uh, you know, is there, Moise is a failure. Is there a leader in Haiti now that uh, offers any hope of uh, replacing this guy, you know, being in elections, or is there a leader in the making, in the offing? There are, as in any society, there are outstanding people in Haiti, you know, very charismatic, very courageous, very capable people, but, um, but it takes more than that to, you know, become the leader of a country, and, and, there are so many competing factions and forces in Haiti that I have no idea who will emerge um, and whether or not that person will be a person of integrity or of a kind of a sort that we could um, in good conscience support. Um, I just have no idea that the politics of Haiti are really complicated and, and, um, you know, I don't know anywhere where rumors are are more um, prevalent than in Haiti. Um, it's it, and where, you know, distinguishing between fact and fiction is more difficult. Um, it's it's an amazing place, and I, I would encourage anyone to go there. Not now because it's too dangerous. Uh, the kidnappings, the shootings. A friend of mine owns a hotel there, and he listens to gunfire every night. Um, um, but um, uh, but it's an amazing country with really outstanding people. So I have no doubt that there are people in Haiti who could, um, if they had the opportunity, uh, help uh, Haiti, um, you know, over time, uh, uh, begin to demonstrate that the government um, uh, can be a positive force in the lives of the Haitian people, but it never really has been. Um, the, the history is that Haitian leaders use their office to enrich themselves and to hold on to power as long as they can. But, you know, what, while I can't name a particular individual because it's not, I just don't know who that would be, I have no doubt that those people exist. Um, and it's a question of how they emerge. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right. Yep. So any other questions about Haiti or uh, let's move on to uh, Colombia and- I don't know if any of you have ever been to the Olafsson Hotel in Haiti. <laughs> That's what I was wondering about. Yeah. Uh, what's the guy's name who runs it? He... Richard Morris. Richard Morris, yes. Uh, so I Richard remember. is a very, very close friend of mine. Uh -huh. um, whenever he comes to the United States, he stays with us and and whenever I go to Haiti, I stay at the Olafsson. And, and um, uh, if you ever do get to Haiti, um, I would strongly recommend staying there. Right. We the will. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful rooms on the second floor. Oh, it's an incredible, you should, you should Google it. It's a spectacular place that yeah. somehow survived the earthquake because it's built out of wood. Um, oh. And uh, I, I went to Haiti shortly after the earthquake. In fact, I was, I had a reservation to fly to Haiti the day before the earthquake, um, or maybe it was the day of the earthquake. In any event, I, I ended up canceling my flight. I think it must have been the day of the earthquake. Uh, and uh, I went 
a few you know weeks later uh and the Olafson had survived uh mm -hmm. but that was an amazing time to be there mm -hmm. yeah and he keeps good music going on at night he does <laughs> he does ram we'll check we'll check it out uh, out hopefully yeah google ram r a m haiti ram stands for richard richard a morse his his mother who was haitian uh was a very very revered uh, singer and dancer, an amazing, a wonderful woman. I, I met her several times and just a gem of a person. Uh, his father was an American um, a professor at Princeton uh, of Latin American studies, basically. And, um, uh, and Richard ended up, uh, although he went to school at Princeton here and, and grew up here, he ended up living in Haiti and, and has lived there ever since and, mm -hmm. and uh, leads one of the, probably the most popular um, band in Haiti uh, and runs this hotel. And again, you all should go there sometime. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and it's known by, uh, by uh, visitors uh, of all political persuasions. Well, yeah. that's wonderful. Let's let's move on to Colombia. Um, we often try to keep this to one hour, and I'd like to introduce Juan Carlos Vallejo, who is from Medellin, the city where the people were playing music so beautifully. Um, and do you want to just ask a question of um, of Tim, uh, Juan Carlos? You have to demute yourself. More, more to, more to make a question. I, I want to express my. It's good that you say at the beginning that you are not talking in behalf of the senator Leahy, because I want to make this this comment is about why is no more strong the position of the United States against the situation that the Colombians are living right now. The, the government is not a government, it's a dictatorship there. He had, that, that guy who, the puppet that they have there is under control of a man who was the close friend of Pablo Escobar. That's not my words, it's the documents of the United States intelligence report. He was close friend of Pablo Escobar. He's involved in business of drugs. Still, two, two days ago, an uh, uh, aircraft fall in, in San Andres with 500 tons of cocaine. And he was a pilot of Alvaro Uribe. And months ago in Guatemala, another aircraft with another pilot of Alvaro Uribe fall with cocaine, another 400 tons of cocaine. Uh -huh. And in Tranquilandia, in, in, in Amazonas, when the famous laboratory of cocaine, that was the most big one in, in the history of the, the, the war on drugs, the helicopter that they found there was the father, the owner, was the father of Alvaro Uribe and his brother. He killed many of my colleagues. I am here in the United States because him. And many people is in exile right now around the world because him. Mm -hmm. And any Colombian is trying to cross the border to come to the United States or to escape from Colombia because the situation there. Mm -hmm. And that people is in the streets is because they don't have future. And I saw the position of, of Senator Leahy that was not strong, was very diplomatic. When I am absolutely sure he will be more strong if the, if the situation was in Venezuela or Bolivia or Nicaragua or in Cuba, why not about Colombia when that guy broke the constitution, broke the law, and is because information of the United States is a man who is close friend of Pablo Escobar. That's not my words, it's documents. I have documents. The United States is the, the origin of that document. Okay. And why that guy is there and is still United States supporting him, not only supporting him, he gave, he awarded him mm -hmm. with the Medal of Freedom by the George, Bo George Bush government. And as in a street in Miami, have the name Alvaro Uribe uh, Avenue. Okay. That, I am, oh, I am very, very sad with that situation. 
Uh, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Juan Carlos. So, uh, yeah, I mean, in other words, the current president is really a disciple of Uribe, who has very clear uh, connections to um, to drug trafficking and so on. Is is does Leahy um, is he aware of this? Is what is has he taken a position on the situation in Colombia? Well, first of all. <clears throat> <laughs> You know, Uribe is not the president of Colombia. It is true that Duque is a protege of Uribe. I think that's well known. Uh, Duque was elected. Uh, there's no question about that. And um, his popularity is quite low at this point, but he was elected. Uh, and I don't think anyone can test the validity of that election. Uh, I think that he has squandered his office. Was elected, was elected with the mafia money. Yeah. was elected with the mafia money with Nene Hernandez, a mm. very famous mafioso. And we have the records, the audio record, the DIA, the, the drugs enforcement okay. agency okay. had records that the Nene gave money for the campaign. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. So I think, um, you know, Duque has, you know, largely squandered his, uh, his term of office. Uh, I don't think at this point that uh, he is likely to be remembered for much of anything. Uh, the situation is one where uh, COVID has exploded in the country. Uh, the numbers of people now dying daily is the equivalent of, in this country, close to 4,000 a day. Uh, so they are now in a very si serious situation. Uh, they're dealing with, as I said, between one and two million Venezuelan refugees. Uh, Duque and Uribe never really supported the peace agreement. Uh, in fact, they worked against it. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, even the Santos administration did not use the time that it had to um, begin to put the peace agreement into effect quickly. And so, time was lost and then that was compounded by the Duque administration, um, which sought to reverse certain parts of the peace agreement. Ultimately, they lost in the constitutional court, but that also lost them uh, about a year. Uh, and now, uh, you know, not just Medellin, but Cali and many other cities are um, uh, the site of protests involving large numbers of people who uh, the government um, has tried to uh, disparage as being just hooligans and vandals and terrorists. And, and when we know that, in fact, most of them are just average citizens who are um, fed up with the economic situation, the lack of, of uh, job opportunities for young people um, and the incompetence of the government, basically. Um, now, you know, there are many different factions now. It's become a very confused situation um, with people with different agendas, uh, some of them involved in violence, some of them associated with different armed groups, most of them peaceful protesters, uh, but the blockades that now have been um, uh, carried out in Cali and some other places have, in some sense, turned people against the protests. Um, so I don't, I don't think, unfortunately, Duque is capable of, of, you know, knowing how to um, resolve a situation like this. Uh, and for all practical purposes, I think the real question now is who's going to be the next leader of Colombia. Uh, the elections are next year. Uh, is it going to be someone on, you know, the far right or the far left or someone in the middle? We have no idea, but um, that person is going to inherit um, uh, a, a multitude of very, very difficult uh, problems, which Duque has, I think, um, utterly failed to um, uh, to address. And and so. You know, while I think that the best hope for the country remains the peace agreement, uh, as complicated and as 
flawed in some ways as it is. And we've seen, you know, it seems like every week um, some social leader or, or member of the FARC who uh, disarmed, uh, assassinated. Uh, at the same time, I, I, I think that the next government has got to demonstrate that the peace agreement, um, you know, really uh, has meaning and can, if implemented, make life better for people. Um, but I, I think that for all practical purposes, uh, Duque uh, at this point is, is finished. Mm. Robin? Robin? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, one question I have wondering about is, um, does, the, does, does Leahy support or does even Biden support the continued spraying of the fields, uh, of the coca fields with uh, uh, glucose? Glyphosate. Was yeah. It? yeah. Glyphosate, yeah. Glyphosate. Um, well, first of all, um, in, in the case of Leahy, the answer is no. Um, the, you know, there are multiple obstacles to that, to resuming the aerial spraying of glyphosate at this point. First, the Constitutional Court has not um, uh, ruled in favor, uh, and um, it was the court that blocked it uh, some years ago. Uh, in addition, Duque has so many other problems that if he starts spraying, um, I think he's going to only make his situation worse. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I would be surprised if he ultimately gets to the point where he has not only the legal authority, but um, uh, the decision to, to do that. Um, but we know that that's what they want to do because uh, the numbers of uh, hectares uh, under production of coke Coca is, has skyrocketed, uh, and and we also know that other forms of forced em uh, eradication, that is, people on the ground, uh, is very dangerous. A lot of people have been killed from landmines or very seriously wounded, um, and so and a lot of these areas now are quite inaccessible. So their their view is that aerial eradication really is the only way, um, and our position has been from years ago and continues to this day that if you don't have meaningful um, security and public services and other opportunities for people to earn income, if you just destroy their one source of income, uh, you're only going to make the situation worse. Exactly. Uh, and, and we have not seen yet the kind of concerted effort to put in place those types of programs, recognizing it's a hugely difficult, costly, complicated problem. Um, but no, we don't support that. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, how many um, American bases are there in Colombia? I have no idea. Are, are nine military bases, and coincidentally, all the military bases around the coca plantations. Very coincident. Hmm. When a drugs enforcement agency was not in Colombia, and the military bases were not in Colombia. The production of cocaine was very low, but when the military bases came to Colombia and the drug enforcement agency skyrocketed the, 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 sky the, the cocaine production. The problem in the foreign policy, the world is a big mistake. We need to start to talk about legalization. President Santos was saying that for many, many years to legalize for me, it's very painful to see here in the United States. I talked with Robin about that. People are selling marijuana, plant, planting marijuana. In Colombia, you, they found uh, two plants of marijuana in your home. You are for jail 18 years. Very easy. 18 years for, for jail, for, for two plants of marijuana. If some guy is selling a marijuana, was smoking marijuana, go to jail. And here, nothing. He open business. I, I was in Canada, and I saw a guy is importing marijuana from Colombia. And I said, "How is it possible you import marijuana from Colombia? It's private. That is, that is not private. We, we on the, the the black market. We can find everything. Bring marijuana from Colombia, and and, and in Colombia it's a crime. And here, nothing happened. That's the same with the cocaine. 
I mean, I, why we not make a legalization of the cocaine and the drugs and the Colombians put the dead people and here the people is a lot of money making business with drugs. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think it's really very strange that uh, there's so much talk about marijuana, legalizing yeah. marijuana here. We've totally forgotten about cocaine and uh, somehow I have the feeling no one is, is snorting cocaine anymore because it's not talked about, but the, apparently there is a lot still coming into the country. Um, do you I think, think there there's is. any hope of moving towards legalization of, uh, of, of cocaine as a way to uh, stop the war on drugs and the way it's manifested in Colombia? You know, I really have no idea, but you know, it, we have seen, um, I think increasingly people recognizing that the way we have gone about trying to address this issue has been a failure. Um, and that's why you are seeing now states legalize um, uh, at least possession of marijuana and, and the use of mar marijuana in, in certain amounts. Um, that wasn't politically possible even 10 years ago. So um, it certainly strikes me as, as not far-fetched to think that um, at some point people will wake up and decide that, you know, we have to uh, approach this differently because uh, clearly the way we've gone about it um, has uh, cost a huge amount of money and produced virtually nothing mm -hmm. uh, in the way of results. At least that's what it seems to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other questions about? Uh, remember what happened. Re, sorry, remember what happened with the alcohol. Remember what happened with the alcohol, uh, Robin. With right. the alcohol, what the same, the same story. Right. Okay, let, let's let uh, someone else. Uh, Megan Epler Wood, please go ahead. Yeah, hi Tim. Thank you for giving us um, some insights into Colombia tonight. Um, I've been there three times since the peace treaty and. Uh, you know, worked with the government and local universities in, in Colombia since the peace, peace treaty. But this new round of protests is very frightening to me. Um, and the reaction of the government is, is uh, just chilling. Uh, my friend Juan Carlos speaks to me all the time about the terrible background of this current government. But I just would like your opinion. I've heard your thoughts on Duque, but I was just trying to keep up with the news and saw that he was even threatening to put uh, Southern Colombia under military government. I mean, that was on a sort of a Amazon watch website. So I was wondering, is, is there, I know that uh, USAID, by the way, too, is looking at more investment. And I'll just combine my questions. So one, is there any threat of military government in the South of Colombia? And two, what kind of investments could USAID make that you think would be helpful? Thank you. Um, I also read that there was talk about uh, imposing martial law in part of Colombia. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, you know, I think that would be a huge mistake. Uh, Colombia actually has something of a democratic tradition compared to a lot of countries. And, and I think that would backfire terribly. Um, Ironically, the vice president of Columbia and I are going to speak tomorrow, and I, you know, I'm going to ask her about that because when I read that, I thought, um, you know, on top of all the other mistakes they've made, um, I think that would be really a colossal blunder. So I do want to know whether or not that is something they're seriously uh, contemplating. Um, in terms of our assistance programs, you know, they they it's not like we sort of hand cash to people. Um, we don't do that. Um, we provide funds that go through uh, different NGOs, um, local entities, some US, some local, um, through USAID. Uh, some of it is focused on, um, you know, uh, economic development type programs. Um, some of it is, um, water and sanitation programs. Some of it is is focused on uh, helping to um, support indigenous uh, communities and indigenous organizations and Afro-Colombian organizations. 
Uh, some of it goes to human rights groups. Some of it goes to the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights' office in Colombia. Um, uh, some of it is for agriculture, um, alternative agriculture development programs. Uh, some of it's for biodiversity uh, programs, which Senator Leahy has um, sort of emphasized um, because of the incredible um, biodiversity that exists in Colombia. Um, uh, you know, then we have the whole other piece of our assistance program, which has been for supporting the attorney general's office, um, uh, training and supporting the police. Um, uh, you know, we have, we still have some program uh, providing assistance to the military, although it's quite small now. Uh, so it, it kind of covers a wide spectrum. Um, you know, we, uh, we're in a situation where, uh, you know, we've been in the minority for quite a few years, so we haven't been able to single-handedly determine um, how much or for what purposes our aid is provided, uh, nor can we in the majority, because, um, you know, it's a, we're in the majority to the extent that we have an evenly divided Senate of 50-50 with the vice president's one vote. <clears throat> so, um, there are aspects of our assistance to Columbia that we don't support. Uh, there are also aspects that we do support. Just one, okay. Um, yeah, because of the current uh, that all the escalation of this government uh, to, you know, threat of, you know, can you hear me? Okay, I'm seeing unstable. And, sort of. And, You're cutting in and out a bit. Yeah, sorry, I'm in a bad place here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, now. Yeah, right now, yeah. Forgive me. So uh, my question is this, if the, the human rights situation were to deteriorate further, given you know the current signs, would the US uh, begin to uh, like maybe diminish our support for Colombia? Or bring in the Leahy Amendment uh, against some of the uh, human rights violations of the military? There are really two provisions that apply in this situation, both of which were written by Senator Leahy. There, 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 there's the Leahy Law, which applies globally to all uh, foreign security force units that are involved in human rights abuses. And then there are, then there are specific conditions on a portion of our assistance uh, to the armed forces of Colombia. Both are there only because of Senator Leahy. The conditions on our assistance to Colombia um, are more specific. Uh, you can read them if you if you want, um, and they require that uh, the Secretary of State certify that these conditions have been met in order for a portion of our assistance to be provided. And um, uh, so, whether or not that certification can be made is a a, a, a function of uh, actions by the Colombian government and a determination by the Secretary of State. Uh, and, <clears throat> um, you know, we're going to, we're in the process of drafting the appropriations bill for next year. And so that, like everything else, will be uh, one of the issues that we're going to want to look at um, in the context of what's going on in Colombia today. Uh, but, you know, the we used to provide hundreds of millions of dollars to the Colombian army. Um, uh, today, we provide about 30 million. Uh, and so the amount of leverage that we have is much less. Uh, but we, you know, every conversation we have with the State Department, I spoke with our ambassador to Colombia um, for about an hour and a half yesterday. Um, and as I said, I'm going to talk to the to the vice president tomorrow focuses on uh, the way they have uh, responded to these protests, uh, the reasons for these protests, um, and uh, the conduct of their police and military forces, uh, and just uh, the overall strategy for dealing with a 
situation which seems to be unraveling in Colombia yeah. um, for all the reasons that we've been discussing. Um, uh, excuse me, Robin, uh, let, me, let me say one small, small thing to Tim. Small, small. So a small thing, yeah. Tomorrow, when you talk with her, she had her brother in jail. Okay. We lost you there. Yeah. For, for transport cocaine. The, the brother of the vice president. Her brother was in jail in Florida because he was the chief of the mules cocaine. He was in jail for that reason. She okay. paid. $250,000 for release her brother. Okay. Second, she, her, her husband, made business with Memo Fantasma, who is a most of Colombia, who is uh, hiding in Spain. He, her husband was making business with him. And that- Okay, uh, Juan Carlos, why don't you uh, email Tim about yeah. these details? Because, you know, when, it, it's hard to um, make it stick when you're just saying it. So please do that. Um, my, my, my point is that in a sense, the US government has to be friends with the Colombian government because we want them to be a bulwark against Venezuela. And in fact, there are some emails that I've read recently that's, that question why is the US sending more soldiers to Colombia, could it be that there's a plan for an attack on Venezuela? Do you think there's any any justification of those rumors? I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I think that's the last thing that President Biden has in mind. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Uh, any other questions? I have one more, but. Uh, uh, I think we're probably running out of time, Robert, so it'd be great if you, but I, I think it's good that you have another question. Yes, okay, just one last question. Um, this is about a guy named Alex Saab, who is a Venezuelan diplomat, who the United States took off, an, off of an airplane in Cape Verde. He, when? Uh, I think in the last month, and he is still in prison in Cape Verde. And he was, okay, he was a Venezuelan diplomat going to Iran to arrange for food wow. supplies to come to Venezuela. Um, in a way, we're, we are doing ex exactly what the head of Belarus did yeah. recently, yeah. where it made a plane land and they took a, an activist off of the plane and, um, it seems tortured him and and so on. I mean, we we've all read about that, but we haven't read about the fact that the United States government has done uh, something similar in holding um, a person in in jail with no real charges against him. Are you aware of this case? Um, no, I don't. I don't think I am. When did this happen? Um, I think in the last couple of weeks, several people were down there uh, pleading for his release. And one wonders about what is our uh, US power over Cape Verde. It's just a bunch of islands there off of uh, Africa. Africa I will send you the link because we've written, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the date of it. Uh, we wrote it up in Toward Freedom, um, our media organization here in what was his what was his role in the government do you know uh he, well he was just a uh, venezuelan diplomat on his way to iran his name is alex saab s-a-a-b and he is currently in jail in cape verde and I don't think I do know about him, but I'll, I'll see if I can find out anything. Okay, I will send you the link that we have about him. Okay. Then, okay, well, thank you. Any, um, any other um, responses or questions?
No, I, I think that all of this though, this is Sandy talking, merits further discussion actually, um, because I think one thing I want to ask was too complicated tonight, but I wonder if Tim might be available at some other time. I don't think people know that much about this peace agreement, not in the United States. So I would like to know more about that and its failure or its success, but maybe we could ask Tim to do a similar I don't know what we call it, program, I guess, in a couple, in a month or so, or a couple months. Would that be all right to explore this? You know, the, um, the University of Notre, um, Notre Dame is, um, has, a, has a project which is periodically reporting on sort of the status of the peace agreement in Colombia. Uh -huh. what, is, what is being implemented, what isn't, um, what is working, what isn't. Um, I think the U.S. government is actually supporting that. Um, mm -hmm. They're conducting their own sort of analysis as the as time goes along here um, of just how well the peace agreement is being yeah. implemented. Um, and you might want to check and see if you can find that. I, they send me their reports periodically. Um, I have little time to read anything, but I, um, I, I think that they are a, a pretty good source of information. Good. Um, right. Uh, I think it is fair to say, though, that uh, by any objective standard, uh, the peace agreement is in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a very ambitious agreement to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Santos deserves a lot of credit for, you know, uh, against a lot of odds, mm -hmm. um, pulling it off. But, but I also think that... Uh, it remains to be seen whether or not uh, it really produces what people hope for. Well, thank you so much, Tim. So Robin, do you want to conclude? I would like to announce that next week, the People's Law School will be presenting on state government, what to expect from it, what it is. And that will be attended by uh, Ted Kenny, who's one of the attorney generals within that office. And I really want to thank you, uh, Tim, for being with us tonight and all the work that you have done with us for Vicki and all the work that you've done also for the people of our state. So thank you very much. Robin, do you want to conclude? Yeah, and uh, I say thank you also. And I will send you a link to our uh, animated film of Haitian history. Oh, yes. please do. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's absolutely it's wonderful. No, I really look forward to that. And also the link to the case of uh, Alex Saab, which now I just look at our uh, our link on toward freedom, and he has been in jail since June twelfth last year. So this is not a new situation, although we are writing about it as a new situation. So, I but I'd love to have your response to that. Is there any? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar with it. So he was arrested by the previous by the Trump administration's Justice Department. Uh, I, I, oh, um, I guess you're. Yeah, I guess. I, you're I just. I need to. I need to learn a bit more. Uh huh. Okay. I mean, this would be. I would hope an opportunity for Biden to make a change from what the Trump administration did. So hopefully. Uh, well, I think um, there's a lot of things we want Biden to do differently than what. The previous administration did. It's a list that would probably go um, <laughs> go about a mile long. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure how close to the top this guy is, but um, mm -hmm. we'll have to look at it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, and thanks everyone. Thank you. Okay. And all right. Also. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good to see you. Same here.